Hello everybody, welcome to another video from my series Quick Folds On, in which I talk about my opinions about a certain Star Trek episode. What will be this episode about? Well, 30 years ago, plus one day, the next episode of Star Trek The Next Generation premiered, called The Naked Now. In the case the story will sound familiar to you, correct? This is a sequel to an episode from the original series called The Naked Time. In that episode, the crew of the original Enterprise get infected by a strange disease, which makes everybody behave like they're drunk. It was a dramatic story and a great character study, so I do understand why Roddenberry wanted to have something similar for The Next Generation. A dramatic story which will explore our new characters. So choosing DC Fontana to write it seemed like a great choice, but after the rewrites she decided to get her name removed, so the script is credited to J. Michael Bingham. So you can clearly see she wasn't happy with the changes. The USS Tsiolkovsky has been assigned to observe the final days of a dying red supergiant, the Enterprise has now arrived to their position and tried to contact them, but they all sound drunk. Hmm, sounds familiar. While it sounds like a group of people is having a little orgy, a different group of people has decided it will be fun to open an emergency hatch. Riker, Tasha and Jordi and Data beam to the Tsiolkovsky, only to find out that the people have been sucked out into space. Or blown out, whatever. Jordi goes to a room filled with frozen bodies and finds a fully dressed up woman in a shower and he touches her. He obviously hasn't seen the naked time. The team returns to the Enterprise and Dr. Crusher examines them Everybody seems to be alright, except for Jordi, who is angry and sweating. She wants to keep him in quarantine, but during his first chance he escapes. Great work, Dr. Crusher. He goes to infect more people, starting with everybody's favorite teenager, Wesley Crusher. Why do people hate him? I mean, he's a normal teenager, who spends his time by building portable tractor, beam generators, and he records the captain's speeches, and then he edits them together and pretends that the captain gives him orders. Okay, I admit this kid needs to be late and fast. Jordi touches him and shoots his own infected biological material into the young man's body, uh, okay, that didn't sound so good, but the main thing is that uh, Wesley is infected too. Jordi then goes to the observation lounge, or however this place is called in this episode, where he gets found by Tasha Yar. So hooray, it's time for another infection. Tasha brings him to sickbay and then leaves, because she has better things to do like breaking into the Anna Choice quarters and trying to steal her clothes. I think that the thing uh, could be called cloth. Uh, Riker gave Data a new order to find uh, when in the past somebody showered in clothes. After remembering he was studying the history of the previous enterprises, Data finds out that Kirk's enterprise has had a similar problem, so they now have a cure. Or they think so, but no, the virus has mutated. So the cure doesn't work anymore. So this whole subplot was absolutely pointless. Hooray, I think. Meanwhile, we get to see the engineering and we meet the new chief engineer, Sarah McDougall, and her assistant, Jim Shimoda. Now, these two characters are pretty interesting. McDougall appears only in this episode and no other, for some reason in the first season there will be a different chief engineer in every episode. Why? 
that's a good question. Did none of the actors want to reprise his or her role? Well, there is at least some explanation for it. In one of the later episodes, uh, they will say that the Enterprise D has actually four chief engineers. But again, from season two on, this will change. Uh, because uh, from season two, there will be only one chief engineer, Jordi. And why is the assistant important? Well, just look at his acting and his behavior. Should he represent a mentally disabled person? If so, how did he get to such a high position? Anyway, the first here, uh, the captain giving an order for McDougal to come to the bridge. And when she leaves, also to Shimoda, but he should go to the sick bay. When he refuses to leave, because that would mean the engineering will be empty, Wesley appears there telling him that he will stay there and call him if something happens. So he intentionally lets some random teenager to take command of the second most important section of the starship, and he does that before the infection. So yes, he clearly allows Wesley to take command on the engineering and therefore declares himself the acting captain. Tasha gets horny and she basically sexually assaults a male officer. When Picard wants her on the bridge and she refuses, he orders Data to get her. When he goes to the headquarters, uh, he sees a lot of her, if you know what I mean. Uh, we also get informed that he is fully functional in every meaning of the word. So thanks, I always wanted to know if the android is able to have sex, so... Well, actually not, I wasn't. Riker and McDougall go together to engineering, only to find out that Wesley managed to create a force field prohibiting anybody to come in. However, Wesley lets Shimoda in, for some reason. Okay, he at least has an excuse. He's a dumb teenager and he's basically drunk, so he might have a good excuse. So what does Shimoda do? He pulls out the isolinear chips and this is my problem with the character. When he was supposed to be normal, he acted like he was drunk. When he was supposed to behave like he's drunk, he behaves like he's drunk, stoned and five years old. I mean, I used to drink ages ago, but I would never in my deepest states of alcohol intoxication think about removing the engine of my car or light my flat on fire or anything so stupid like this. Riker meanwhile gets touched by Troy. He brings her to sickbay and that is Dr. Crusher. She realizes that he just got infected and he infected also her. So we have one ticking clunk element. The doctor needs to find a cure before she loses her mind. But this episode needs a second ticking clock element. The star can go boom any moment, so they need to start the engines and get the hell out of here. Which means uh, getting Wesley out of engineering is the first priority. But not before Beverly goes to the bridge and starts to get a bit rapey for my taste. On Picard, he of course gets infected, McDougal manages to short circuit the force field and get back to the engineering, however it will take a few days till they can get the chips back and start the engines. Data comes back to the bridge and he's infected. Oh wait, how can an android get infected by the same disease as humans? If I cough on my computer, it doesn't cough back. But whatever, Wesley suggests that Data should be able to put the chips back much faster. So they send him in. And the star indeed explodes or implodes or whatever. It simply goes boom. And a huge chunk of debris flies uh, towards the Enterprise. Data has bad news, he will need at least a minute more than they have. So Wesley suddenly has an idea, why not take the Enterprise's tractor beam and revert it. The professional and sober McDougal claims it's not possible, so the incompetent and drunk teenager manages to do it. Of course. 
He reverts the tractor beam and he basically throws the Tsiolkovsky against the huge rock. That slows the rock down and uh, gets the Enterprise the helpful time. So Data manages to successfully do his job and the Enterprise goes into warp in the final moment. Everybody gets cured and Wesley gets praised for his help and saving the ship. <sighs> Well, this episode has a lot of problems. The first one is the tone. As I said before, the original series episode was a character-driven drama. The, this episode tries to be the same. At the same time, it tries to be a comedy. At the same time, it tries to be a standard sci-fi story. And it's not really any of that. The story is a bit clumsy, maybe way too sexual for today's politically correct atmosphere. And as several other people said, it came way too early. We didn't have the chance to know the characters as people. And we are already shown them as drunks. Maybe it would work much better as one of the last episodes of the first season. You know, uh, we could first uh, know the crew members and then put them into this big character test. And why is Data also infected? It really doesn't make any sense to me. But it's definitely not that bad, at least in my opinion. I know that many people hate this episode and why... I can see why I don't really agree with it. I mean, it's surely not a masterpiece, but I like it for what it is. I would personally give this episode 6 out of 10. It's slightly above average. But of course, those were only my opinions. I would love to know your opinions about this episode. Do you like it or hate it or do you agree with my slightly above average rating or whatever let me know down in the comment section if you like these little video reviews of different star trek episodes feel free to watch any of the previous episodes and come back next week when i talk about the episode code of honor and to be honest i'm not looking forward to watch it until then thanks a lot for watching and bye